Hey everybody, it's your friend and your guy and the YouTuber who blocks naughty words in his YouTube comments, Gardner. I'm trying out different lighting situations right now, uh, so if things don't look as exposed as they did in the last video, now you know why. Hopefully I've got the, the lighting situation sorted out. The camera is weird because when I look at the tablet down here to see what the camera is seeing, everything looks perfectly fine, and then when I load the footage into the computer, everything's like... 13 steps overexposed, and I don't understand what's going on with it. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. This video is going to be cool. We're actually going to be answering the web's most asked questions about Linux, because I think it's a fun idea, honestly. Uh, so here's a Linux expert answering the web's most asked questions about Linux. Oh, and, and we're not going to be asking Google these questions. We're going to be asking DuckDuckGo, because uh, uh, you can Google on DuckDuckGo. Google is a verb, link here. <laughs> so let's start with, is Linux? Is Linux an OS? Uh, OS meaning operating system. It really depends on uh, how you're asking that question. Typically, nerds will get a little butthurt if you say uh, Linux is an operating system because Linux is technically a kernel, which is like the core of an operating system, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, Linux distributions are operating systems. Uh, I don't like calling, I don't like the word distro anymore. I'm just kind of over that word, honestly. Uh, all right, well, that's, that's an answer, isn't it? Next question, uh, is Linux free? Linux, uh, it depends on what you mean by free. There are two definitions in the open source Linux Fosse world. The first definition of free is gratis, right? Uh, free as in beer, right? So you get free beer, that means you don't have to pay for it. Are you able to get uh, Linux, and by saying Linux, I'm talking about the kernel right now. Uh, can you get Linux for free, like without paying for it? And the answer to that is yes, uh, Linux is free. The second definition of free is free as in liberty, freedom of speech, right? And uh, Yes, Linux is also free in that dimension as well. But in the open source world, the only real uh, definition of free is freedom, in my opinion. You can charge people for the binary builds of your free and open source software, and there's no problem with that. But in order for something to be free, people have to be able to access it. Having to pay for the source code kind of is a little bit weird. There's some gray area in there. The next question is, is Linux good? Uh, yeah. And real quick, uh, before we keep going, hit that like button. It really helps the show out. You can also hit that subscribe button if you want to see more of this. And if you want to see my videos early, head over to library, lbry.tv slash at the Linux gamer. It's an alternative to YouTube, and I think it's really cool. Next question. Is Linux Unix? Uh, Linux started out as a clone, as a, as a new version, a free version of Unix, um, but today it is not Unix. And some people would even argue that a lot of what's going on with Linux has violated the, the spirit of Unix. The next question is, is Linux Windows? No, it's not. Uh, it's not in any way, shape, or form Windows. Windows is a proprietary, uh, bespoke implementation of an operating system created by Microsoft uh, that hasn't changed a whole lot since it was invented back in like the 70s <laughs> or whenever. Um, yeah, Windows is not uh, good. And Linux is, so there you go. Is Linux 64-bit? Uh, yes, you can get 64-bit uh, i86 builds of Linux. You can get 64-bit uh, ARM versions of, of Linux. And you know, Linux-based operating systems support a wide array of uh, computers, CPUs, uh, down to like tiny 8-bit uh, microcomputers, all the way up to uh, modern day uh, supercomputers. So, uh, yeah, Linux, you can get 64-bit builds of Linux, no problem. I don't know if Linux actually supports 8-bit computing. I'm not sure about that. I take that back. Okay, next question. What Linux does Linus use? That is an interesting question. So the last I knew, uh, he was using Fedora, um, but I honestly don't know which version of uh, Linux he uses. I've heard that he's kind of a distro hopper, but uh, I really don't know. 
Next question is, what Linux distribution is Raspbian based on? Uh, Raspbian is based on uh, Debian Linux. Um, Debian Linux is one of the most popular and one of the most forked projects or Linux distributions out there. Uh, really like Debian, Debian's cool, but Ubuntu and uh, Raspbian and a bunch of others are all based on uh, Debian. Debian is great, it's a great uh, distribution to base your project on. The next question is, when was Linux invented? So Linux was actually created in 1991 by Linus Torvalds. Um, that, that's a pretty easy question to answer. <laughs> so the next question is, what does Linux mean? Uh, <laughs> that is an interesting question. I, I'm pretty sure I heard the story that originally it was called Freaks, F-R-E-A-X, uh, a portmanteau of the words freak and free where the X at the end references uh, Unix. So Linus Torvalds actually went to the University of Helsinki and he was actually able to um, use the school's servers to distribute uh, freaks. So the files were uploaded to the university's FTP server and one of the volunteers who managed the FTP server renamed the project to Linux because he didn't like the name freaks. And from there, Linus Torvalds was like, yeah, yeah, that works. So there isn't much of a uh, reason for the name beyond uh, the, the FTP server admin didn't like the name Freaks. Yeah, that's a good story. Uh, that if you want to, if you want me to make a video about like the history of Linux, I would love to do that. Let me know in the comments if you want me to, to uh, do a video about the history of Linux, like the early days. Wouldn't that be cool? Next question: Are Linux servers secure? Uh, it really depends on what version of Linux you're running. Uh, what distribution you're running, and who's actually administrating the server. There are some truly, truly poorly managed servers out there. It really depends on like the server administrator. If your server administrator is running software that has known exploits, then it's not gonna be secure. If you have someone who is a security expert, or at least knows a little bit about server architecture, server security, then it's probably gonna be pretty secure. The next question is, are all Linux distributions free? Uh, again, that goes back to the definition of free that you're using. And that's interesting because while like most distributions of Linux are going to be free as in free beer, there are some that have been uh, mutated into proprietary ness, uh, proprietary ness, being awful. <laughs> so there is a problem called uh, TiVoization. Um, the original TiVos, I don't know if they still do, but the original TiVos actually used the Linux kernel and uh, as like the base, but then basically everything else that was built up around the Linux kernel was proprietary. But so long as TiVo was releasing the source code for the kernel, that wasn't so much of a big deal according to the GPL v2, which is what the Linux kernel still uses to this day. In response to that, um, the Free Software Foundation actually came out with GNU uh, public license version three. And that actually has provisions in it that prevent so-called TiVoization. And Linus Trevalds has actually come out and said that he is opposed to GPLv3 because of the provisions that prevent it from being used in proprietary projects. And, um, you know, that's, that's an interesting debate. Now, the other interpretation of this question could be, are all Linux distributions like free as in free beer. So there are a few Linux distributions out there that request uh, that you pay for them, even if it's a, a pay what you want kind of deal. The first one that comes to mind is elementary OS. Uh, you don't have to pay for it, you can download it for free, but they do prompt you when you are in the download process if you want to pay for the operating system. Um, that's actually quite a cool idea. Uh, and, and it's one that's been adopted by a couple other Linux distributions, most notably Ubuntu. Uh, if you go to Ubuntu's website, uh, when you go to the download page, it asks if you want to pay for the software. You don't have to, but you can. Um, and I think that that's a really nice business model. I think that it strikes a, a good balance between um, the ideals of free software and also paying the people who make free software. <laughs> Uh, for their hard work. I believe there are some uh, Linux distributions that you actually have to pay for. Um, I don't know the names of them offhand. I think Red Hat might be one, but I don't know that for sure. The next question is, are Linux distributions all free? 
Oh, I already said that one. The next question is, are Linux folders case sensitive? The answer to that question is yes. Linux file systems are case sensitive. If you have a directory path that's uh, home user capital D downloads and you type in home user lowercase d downloads, you're not gonna have uh, the, the folder that you're looking for there. If lowercase d downloads doesn't exist, then it's gonna have an error. That is in stark contrast to Windows file system path names not being case sensitive, which goes back years and years and years back to the DOS era where every name in the file system was stored as uppercase. And so in order to be able to access it, it didn't really matter because the, the system would uppercase everything and then check to see if the file was there. Uh, and the, the real question is, why would Microsoft continue that kind of legacy support to this day? The next question is, are Linux and Windows compatible? Um, not particularly. Uh, there are many, many problems with uh, Windows software uh, running on Linux and vice versa. Um, the biggest problem is that uh, they just have different, uh, completely like fundamentally different workflows in terms of software development, in terms of uh, software management, in terms of accessing files from the hard drive, right, from storage. It's, uh, it's pretty, pretty different. But you can actually use Windows software on Linux through something called Wine. Uh, it's a translation layer that translates um, Windows system calls to Linux system calls, uh, including DirectX. And when you have Steam open, you can actually download Windows games through Steam and use the Proton wrapper to uh, play Windows games on Linux. It works surprisingly well and it's very well optimized for video games specifically. Um, but in terms of just natively out of the box, no, they're not compatible. Um, it requires a little bit of setup to get Windows software working on Linux. All right, next question. Will Linux run Microsoft Office? Uh, not out of the box. Um, there are free Linux software tools that you can use that will open Microsoft Office documents with varying degrees of success, usually pretty well. Um, but in terms of uh, will, will Linux run Microsoft Office, not really, not super well. Unless you're talking about Office 365 in your browser, then it can do it pretty great. And older versions of uh, Microsoft Office can be run through Wine, but your success there will vary greatly. <laughs> Next question, will Linux replace Windows? Um, I think that it will eventually replace Windows, uh, at least in the desktop user space. I think that the, the number of people who are gonna actually use a desktop computer is diminishing like every year. And uh, so the people who really are going to be using desktop computers are going to be people who uh, know how to use Linux. <laughs> so I think eventually, yeah, it will replace uh, Windows, but probably won't be for a while. Next question, will Linux overwrite Windows? Uh, if you're going to, if you're talking about like dual booting, um, you can actually install Windows and Linux at the same time, um, you install Windows first usually, and then you can install Linux next to it. You don't have to overwrite Windows in order to um, have the two running simultaneously on your machine. Not simultaneously, but like you can pick one or the other to, at boot time. And any Linux distribution worth its salt should be able to resize your partitions uh, and install Linux alongside Windows, no problem whatsoever. And the last question that I'm gonna to answer today, will Linux ever die? Um, I don't think so. There are some doom and gloom uh, neckbeards out there who think that it will um, because of like SJWs and stuff. I don't think that it will. I think that we're, uh, we're on pretty solid ground. We have a pretty great project. Uh, I think Linux is awesome. And I don't think it's gonna die anytime soon. All right, well, that's my video. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I wanna thank my patrons uh, for their continued support of this show. Uh, without them, I wouldn't be able to do what I do here. So thank you to everyone on Patreon. You guys are great. Uh, I'm still having server issues. Uh, that's why the screens are just blank today. <laughs> but uh, pretty soon I'll have the screens back. I'll do the shout outs again. But yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you like what I do, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, share this video with your friends. And uh, you can also pick up a t-shirt. There's a link in the description. But yeah, that's it. Have a great one. I'll see you guys next time. And I love you. Bye.